Hello, hello everyone. I hope you had a wonderful Christmas. And uh, I'm going to post this on the 26th on Boxing Day, because uh, on the 27th, at very, very small hours, at 0 36, uh, there's going to be a Cancer full moon. And this particular Cancer full moon is about karma breaking and destiny changing. Let's take a look at the London chart. I, I gave you the London time, of course. Uh, here it is. And as you can see, it is at, sorry, it, at, at 0 0.33 and not 36. This is the London uh, AM, London time. And as you can see, uh, the moon is exactly conjunct in an applying, doubly applying conjunction with Australia, karma breaking, destiny changing. This is, an, uh, this is a concept that not too many people understand, simply because uh, there are certain concepts that are uh, a lot of people are mixing up for this is like the fate uh destiny and um, and karma and i would not say that karma and destiny are the same i would say uh actually that uh, that destiny is something that you have chosen for yourself for this life whereas karma is something that you already experienced and it's there in your psyche it's there in your behavior patterns and sometimes uh, if it's a very ingrained behavior pattern it simply uh, doesn't allow you to fulfill your destiny and uh, the the third concept um fate is something doomed and 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 dark and and uh, heavy so um that is something that is interesting to explore because that is also linked to karma and linked to destiny as well and uh, uh this is something that I might explore with my my London group quite soon because it has been uh, going on in my my head uh, for quite a while, and I'm gathering uh, charts and information on it. But anyhow, so this this particular uh, Cancer full moon is about karma breaking, and you could say that it's usually about family karma since it's a it's a Cancer um, uh, full moon, and uh, you know family festivals are always always serving as breaking points as well because a lot of people are together people who have resentments or ulterior motives and when they drink a, a glass or two too many then all hell can break loose and we are after that period of time so it's really important to concentrate on destiny changing and karma breaking instead of giving in to negative emotions in the London chart, uh, there is uh, 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 the the vertex is exactly conjunct uh, the North Node and Aries, and actually the Aries North Node uh, conjunction is already separating. You can now you can see, and uh, Mercury retrograde Mercury is in an applying conjunction with Mars. Mars Mercury aspects are about. Uh, saying what's in your head but be careful because you might wound so it's like wounding or being wounded through words quite often and um, uh, the uh, the south node is uh, is where the october 14th um, solar uh, annular solar eclipse was and jupiter is where uh, the lunar eclipse of october 28th was so actually the eclipses are also highlighted in this chart and uh, if you take a look at uh, if you want to want to see those those charts you can go back and find on, on my channel i have videos on both uh, both events okay here's the uh, here's uh, our main um configuration of the uh, full moon it's a crown which is made up by a mystic rectangle and a harmony triangle. So this is where you can understand if you take it the whole apart. Uh, the mystic rectangle portion has uh, two tri trines. One is a water trine and the other one is an earth trine. And uh, the tip of the crown is Jupiter, retrograde Jupiter, with the um, prenatal eclipse, uh, lunar eclipse. Now, if you take a look at Saturn Moon, it's about, it's about how you can stabilize your emotions. And of course, Karma Breaker is making a trine and a water trine to the Lord of Karma, which is quite exciting. And the Sun 
is making a, an earth trying to uh, transpluto, which is channeling and dimension jump. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the main thing here. And if we take a look at the transcendental celestial objects, you have the sun conjunct gratia, which is grace, uh, which is a concept of uh, old times. Uh, our ancestors, our Scythian Hun ancestors of Hungary, uh, loved light. And they, the, the concept of light was always linked to universal love and uh, free grace unlimited free grace and this is another concept that today's people don't understand and it simply means that i can give and give and give and there's no limit to it and at the same time i don't need anything back um think about that so in the sun you have a great uh, this kind of grace horus the first pharaoh and ixion which is the first documented um psychopath but it has an interesting side uh, information. If I'm not going to tell you, Ixion, I, I, I spoke about it so many, many times, but after almost successfully raping um, Hira, and the only reason why it was not Hira who suffered the rape was because uh, the uh, um, cloud goddess Nephili uh, shrouded her and, and she was the one who suffered it instead of here, the uh, uh, the first lady. And uh, after that, Zeus punishes Ixion by by tying him uh, on the an et in eternal uh, via, eternal fiery via, in interesting. And fire, of course, is the element of transformation. And the wheel itself symbolizes the, uh, the, the wheel of the zodiac. And it simply means it's a it's a very interesting concept because it means if that if you are not learning from your own mistakes and you're committing the same mistakes again and again the same crimes the same sins then you will not move you you will have the uh uh the, the potential to to of course change if you want to but if not you will get the same lessons again and again and this is exactly what's happening at the moment in Europe uh, we are past the twelfth uh, sanction package uh the the first 11 was very beautiful they all oh, oh, they worked so brilliantly uh they pushed the whole of europe into poverty and into co complete annihilation and the russians may are thank you very much they are quite well so it's ridiculous it the whole the whole system that we are li living in is ridiculous anyhow so that's six one right there on uh the moon uh, austria conjunction of odysseus Odyssey, of course, uh, the hero. And there's another hero on Jupiter, Gilgamesh. So there are two heroes in, in this uh, whole package. On Saturn, you have Paradise, Gongong, and Sada Melek. Now, that's an interesting uh, uh, concoction right there because Saturn is the Lord of Karma. Something It symbolizes something that we, we must go through, we must experience, we must take as a burden but there's paradise and this is what we do at the moment we are effectively uh just just destroying our paradise uh i i have to tell you because this is something that you don't understand if you're not old enough that the last 70 years uh in europe was really a true paradise uh a lot of people were lifted out of poverty a lot of people had really really great lives compared to what our our ancestors or our even mothers and grandmothers had and we don't know we don't appreciate it and this is what's happening now gong gong which is the destroyer in chinese mythology it's a uh, dragon uh, bodied man-headed monster who is actually cracking the filament of of the cosmos and causing a huge main major uh catastrophe and that's exactly what's happening that's exactly it's a man-made catastrophe a man-made chaos uh program chaos actually that is just pushing us into another dark age but there's Sada Melek which is Alpha uh, Aquarius helping us to come to overcome hopefully because that is the uh, the luck of the king and it's a very very lucky start that's all on Saturn and on Transpluto you have Theopatra, Horem Heben Artemis, uh, two Egyptian figures and the moon goddess, another moon goddess. So they, we have two moons in this chart. And Cleopatra, of course, was born a pharaoh. She was born a, a monarch and she did everything in her power, even 
gave her body uh, to save her country, whereas Horem have uh, denotes the, the potential to rise above what you originally were, because Horem have was born a slave, and then he became a general in in uh, um, Tutankhamun's uh, court. And then after Tutankhamun's death, he himself becomes uh, became the pharaoh. So that is elevation on your own. There is a complex planetary picture. This is what I wanted to show you very br br briefly, that if you work uh, with horoscopes, then you will find, of course, um, um, aspect lines. And, and depending on what orb you give in, uh, an aspect, I usually give only three or four uh, degrees to the main aspects and only two and one to the minor ones. Uh, you will see the uh, these aspect lines, but they may not form a complete configuration. The problem is because configurations have an orb only two degrees. And if it's just a point in space, not a res not a radiating object, then it's one and a half degrees. So actually, if you take a look at the numbers, what you see, what you can, can see that there, the nodes and Juno and Lilith are actually forming a configuration and Uranus and the nodes and Juno also. But for instance, Uranus and Lilith, uh, the sextile line is there, but it's still not uh, exactly there because uh, because the, the, the orb is too wide. But anyhow, you do have a mini trapeze, the top of which is Lilith, Revolt Against Injustice, and South Node, Learn from Past Incarnations and Utilize uh, Your Knowledge. Here are the transcendental celestial objects really very briefly. Uh, on Mercury retrograde, you have Iris, uh, the... the, uh, the um, uh, here as personal uh, messenger, of course, the uh, the rainbow. And uh, Grumium, uh, see, uh, Gra Draco, I showed it to you a couple of days ago. It's the mouth of the celestial dragon. Uh, and the whole uh, dragon constellation is about creating or protecting uh, uh, treasures. And on Aculo and Aculos, which is one of the nebula above the sting of the Scorpio, and Aculos is the uh, uh, the seat or the center for weakness. And this is where you you learn to be weak in order to s survive uh, despite the weakness. And the galactic center, which has a, a bigger orb, it has a two degree orb because it's an enormous, uh, huge um, um, black hole, a giant, four, uh, 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 super massive. That's it. This is how it's called, a super massive black hole. And the galactic center is one of the key central areas in karmic astrology, signifying the karmic dilemma of to be or not to be. Shall I come to the third dimension in physical body? Shall I go through the, the birthing experience, the childhood experience, the uh, adulthood experience, and shall I die at the end of it? Or shall I just stay in my energy form and just be nice and, and fluffy up there? So that's what the galactic center is describing. On Mars, you have Demeter, uh, a mother goddess. On Uranus, you have Buddha, enlightenment. On the north node, you have Panacea and Bat and Kaitos. Uh, Panacea is the universal um, uh, remedy. And opposite it, uh, you have uh, Avicenna, which is a poly polymath, which is a, a healer. She, he was Ibn Sina from the 1001 Nights uh, uh, tale. And uh, Bat and Kaitos is uh, uh, the set, uh, Zeta Setus, and the whole constellation set is in a so-called liminal space. This is what Bernard Brady introduced uh, in comic, uh, in astrology, we, we, and we are utilizing it in comic astrology as well. Uh, liminal space mean, means that the zodiacal constellations don't close, and another constellation which is beneath them is overtaking those degrees, and that is what Set is doing. See the um, so the uh, the monster that is resurfacing from your subconscious. Uh, Aries has Hephaestus. Uh, the um, lame um, Smith, Smith, who is creating view, he is lame. He may, may be uh, incomplete and 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 ugly, but what he creates is always beautiful and and very valuable. And uh, besides the Avicenna on the south node, you have also Eos and Cleo. Cleo is the muse of history. Eos is the dawn. So this is what we need to bring into um, uh, as knowledge in order to survive because the South Node is our survival kit. 
and of course the solar annular 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 eclipse I don't know how to pronounce it anyhow on October 14th for which the video you can you watch for yourself and take a look at what it actually says and I do know you have Nyx who is a who is uh, uh, the knight and she was born together with Gaia uh, from chaos so it's an interesting energy it's the creation energy and uh, uh, Juno Mars symbolizes that liaisons are cracking up uh, because uh, of misunderstanding retrograde Mercury, and that's exactly what you see in the world. It's funny to to watch these um, uh, war mongers who are finally uh, admitting that it's not working. The war is not working. Interesting, and those who want you uh, the Ukrainians to fight to keep on fighting demand immediate uh ceasefire in gaza interesting interesting concept and uh, they are not bothered by their uh uh i'm not going to use any bad words okay we have also a forceps uh which is re really a mutable t-square and a t-square and a, an engine put together the mutable t-square is made up by mercury mass Neptune and Vesta. Vesta is a focusing principle, focus on what you talk and how you talk and how you fight. And the apex is Neptune, universal love and transcendence. Vesta, Neptune is about focus on what you don't see. Mercury, Neptune is about deceit. And Mars, Neptune is about uh, the Don Quixote aspect, I always call it, when you are fighting for someone or something that you don't even know and don't even recognize and the mutable water engine is made up by uh, the same square between neptune and vesta and venus and the venus vesta trine water trine is beautiful because neptune of course is a higher octave of venus venus is carnal love or general physical love and neptune is higher dimensional love universal love so the two are now joining in water which is the sign of emotions so and the 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 queen kong side is bi-directional so it's actually working as a trine so you can focus on your loved ones or your love and here are the transcendental celestial objects on venus you have geisha <laughs> okay you know what it is uh galahad a, la, a knight in shining armor and tah uh, a creator god in in egyptian mythology and two Two are uh, TNOs, Zevana and Deucalion. Zevana is uh, the um, uh, goddess for elementals and and all kinds of uh, divas and 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 nymphs and and all these all the, these mythical creatures who are there. They are just in hiding because uh, we just took their land, so to speak, just like we took the lands of the wild animals. And Deucalion uh, denotes survival and to become chosen. And uh, so it's a beautiful thing on on Venus. I I really have I I really was happy to see in this particular space time moment that we have those two uh, sent uh, TNOs. And on Vesta you have two bright stars, Polaris and Bet Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is Alpha Orion, and Polaris is the current pole star. And I'm going to show you how it is. Because uh, Vesta is at 28 something Gemini, not yet there, but of course the, it is aligned with Betelgeuse and Polaris. And as you can see, these two stars, although they have the same astrological degree, are way, way different, uh, the different portion of the universe. So nothing can be really conjunct Polaris. It's a concept that's not happening simply. And uh, Betelgeuse is way below uh, Vesta, of course. And as you can see, uh, the moon is very out of bounds. Actually, it's five degrees above the ecliptic. Uh, as you can see, um, here's the uh, line of the ecliptic at 23 degrees, uh, six, uh, 26 minutes and uh, the moon is at 28 degrees uh, 8 so it's very very out of bounds when something is so out of bounds uh, it, it usually it's very very difficult to utilize it's so out in the dark recesses of uh, the um, universe that it is not on a human level in any sense but if you see it in a natal chart in if you see any planet out of bounds it usually means that it, it, it doesn't function normally on a human everyday level. It functions on a universal level, which may or may not be accessible and understandable on the human level. The more out of bounds, the, le the less 
uh, it is utilizable. And of course, the reason, the karmic reason for such placement is extreme pain when, when the soul is lifted out of the physical body as a result of extreme pain. So that's where the moon, are, uh, moon at, the, uh, at the moment is, not at the moment, but on the, um, on the uh, Cancer full moon. Uh, happy full moon, happy new year. I hope you survive Christmas and uh, happy uh, you had a happy and great time. And I wish you all the best for the new year. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.